welcome back to day 24 of my six mark challenge for AQA GCSE Science. In the run up to the GCSE exams, from Monday to Saturday each week, I'm posting a new video to allow you to practice answering these extended response questions. You can find a link in the description below to each week's questions and access all of the previous videos via the playlist. Today's question comes from the first topic in AQA GCSE Physics Paper 2. Now, this is a combined science topic, but if you're watching this video in 2022, when certain topics have been removed, if you're taking combined science, then forces and elasticity is not being assessed in either paper. Whereas if you're taking the triple science, the 8463 syllabus, then it is being assessed and you do still need to know about this practical. So before you dive in and write an answer, just a quick reminder that this is not an essay question. So you don't need to be writing in full sentences. And in fact, I would strongly encourage you for any method question to use bullet points or a numbered list. When you get to the end of your method, you need to think, would this method actually work? Would it allow the student to answer the question, which here is determining the spring constant of the spring? And then finally, I would really strongly suggest that you plan this question while you're answering the rest of the paper. So in other words, find the six mark question at the start of the exam, have a read of it. And then as you answer the rest of the paper, just go back and forth and write down some little notes so that when you come to actually start your answer, you have a really clear structure in your head. If you haven't done so already, pause the video now and give yourself six minutes to answer this six mark question. To start with, let's write a method exactly as you would have done this practical when you did it for the required practical. And then we can think about which bits you actually need to include in order to get six marks. To begin with, you would have hung a spring from a clamp that's attached to a clamp stand. And then you may have clamped a ruler alongside or you may have just held it. But the reason that you would choose to clamp it is that that's going to ensure that it's definitely vertical. You're then going to measure the initial length of the spring. In other words, the length of the spring before you have added any weight to it. And then you're going to hang a one Newton weight from that spring. You measure the new length of the spring and you use that new length together with the initial length in order to calculate the extension. And you might have included in your answer the actual calculation that you do at that point. Now, when you did this practical in class, you probably repeated this, adding a Newton each time up to maybe 10 Newtons. Crucially, you need to not exceed the limit of proportionality because we're only going to get that nice directly proportional graph that you would get when plotting the force against the extension as long as we don't exceed that limit of proportionality or that elastic limit. And then finally, we know that force is equal to the spring constant multiplied by the extension. So if we rearrange that, then to get the spring constant, we need to do the force divided by the extension. In this question, we're specifically asked what we would need to do in order to calculate the spring constant. But when you did this practical in class, you were probably also trying to demonstrate that this is a directly proportional relationship. So you probably collected data over a series of adding several different masses or several different weights. But we don't actually need to do that if all we're trying to do is calculate the spring constant. All we need is sufficient data to prove that we haven't gone past the limit of proportionality. So actually, you could complete this practical making just three different length measurements. So let's look at what you would actually have to include in order to get your six marks. You're going to need to have hung the spring off something. In class, you probably used a clamp and a clamp stand, but actually any hook would do. You're going to need to have measured an initial length and then added some kind of force to it. So it doesn't necessarily need to be one Newton. Then we need to measure new lengths and we're going to have to do that because if we don't do that, we can't calculate the extension. Now, as long as you've said that you have to make sure you don't exceed the limit of proportionality or you've said something about making three different measurements so that you can demonstrate that the gradient is always the same and therefore we're still before that limit of proportionality, you don't actually need to have included adding lots and lots and lots of masses. So really, we need hanging the spring, measuring the initial length, adding some weights, measuring the new length, calculating the extension, not exceeding the limit of proportionality, and finally, what you're actually going to do with that data. And that would be sufficient to get you your six marks. For next week's question, we're going back to biology. And this one isn't strictly paper one because really meiosis doesn't come up until paper two, but hopefully you'll understand why I've still included it. You can find a link in the description below to all of this week's questions and also the playlist containing all of the previous videos in case you've missed any. Thank you very much for watching.
That's it for week four of the Six Mark Challenge, but I hope to see you back on Monday for some more biology. If you found this video useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCC Science revision videos coming soon.